This is Rob Lambert's AssetProtectionTraining.com introducing me, Paul Richard Brown. I'm a lawyer with the law firm of Bearsford Booth in Seattle, Washington, and the topic of today's discussion is, quite simply, what do you do when you get sued? Imagine you're at home, you're sitting down relaxing after a hard day of work, and you get a knock on the door. As normal, you get up, you answer the door, and there in front of you is a, str is a stranger. And this person hands you basically two packets of papers and says to you, you've been served, and turns and walks away. With shock, you look at what's in your hand and you see this document that you've never seen before, and your name is on it. <laughs> but your name isn't at the top. Your name is at the bottom of the document and says you are a defendant. You have been served. You have been sued. There is a complaint. Now, understandably, the normal emotions such as shock, anger, dismay, stress, to name a few, overwhelm you. What are you going to do? You turn around to your spouse. She or he looks at you and, what's this? And, gosh, I don't know, honey, but... I think I've been sued. Here's these documents. Understandably, you probably don't even want to read the documents, and if you look at these documents, you probably skim them over because your heart is racing at such a pace that, that it's almost uncontrollable. So what's your next step? Well, you need to hire an attorney. Yes, I know you don't want to hear that answer, but that is the answer you must face. You have to hire a lawyer. Now the real issue then is, what kind of lawyer do you hire? All joking aside, you hire a good one. But <laughs> how do you find out whether or not you have a good attorney? My recommendation would be you find someone who is passionate. Find someone who cares. Find someone who has empathy for your situation. Find someone who you believe will be your warrior, your, your champion. Someone who is going to look for your best interests and decide what to do that's in your favor. Now, how do you find this person, he or she, this, this warrior, this champion? If you've not dealt with lawyers before or you've dealt with attorneys just in business transactions, it's not that easy. I mean, do you, you know, look in the yellow pages or TV? I, I think the better recommendation might be to talk to your friends, vet out someone that you can find that's recommended. Find recommendations on who they are what type of person they are, what is their experience, and then meet them, vet them out. See if this person, he or she, is indeed going to be someone who's going to be your champion. Because once you find that person who's your champion, that will help in the comfort level on what you need to face in the upcoming months and sometimes years. Find the lawyer who can explain the situation to you. Find a lawyer who will tell you the truth. A good lawyer is someone who will tell you the truth and those things that you may not want to hear, such as, you may have some exposure here. This is what we need to do to, to limit it. Or, this is a bad case, but unfortunately, it's going to take many months, possibly a year or two, to resolve it. And it's going to cost you a lot of money. But they're being honest and they have integrity. It's not going to be a situation, unfortunately, like you see in the movies or on TV where within an hour episode, you have a trial, you have a judgment, you have a, a resolution of the matter. Within the time you finish your popcorn or soda in a movie theater, the case has already been, you know, resolved. That impression is not accurate to the reality of American jurisprudence, American litigation. I mean, it's kind of ironic, in spite of all the the lawyer jokes we have, we are the most litigious society in the world. More lawsuits than any other country combined. So yes, our society teases lawyers, but we sure use them a lot. So what do you do then? You found your warrior, you've got your champion, you have someone you trust. This person needs to explain the process to you on what to do when you have this lawsuit. The first recommendation would be, now take a deep breath. Yes, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be something that you're going to be happy about, but nonetheless, take a deep breath. If you recall what I said a few minutes ago, it's a long process. This doesn't happen overnight. Things don't immediately occur. It takes some time. 
your lawyer should be able to explain to you that process. I'll briefly go over you know, some, some of the generic situations you're going to be looking at so you can ask these questions of your attorney to see whether or not they have an understanding and, and, and can lead you in a way that makes sense to you. So you have this complaint. This is that document where I told you was given to you as you open the door. And at the bottom of that complaint is your name, defendant. Okay, that's not a good feeling at all, but you have to look at that complaint and answer those complaints, those allegations that are found in those pages. Some of the paragraphs are going to be pretty simple, such as, you know, what your name is or where you live or where you're employed. And you have to answer whether or not you admit or deny those things. Then you get to what we call the meat or the heart of the complaint. And those are called causes of action. Causes of action are the legal terms of what is being complained about you, such as a, a breach of contract, um, a misrepresentation of some kind, um, a wrongful act of some kind. This is where you have to look and, and discuss, quite frankly, very detailed with your attorney about how you're going to respond. Once you get all those responses together, you then file what's called an answer. And that's usually done within 20 to 30 days, depending upon the jurisdiction of where this case is um, being heard. Also within that answer, though, you will have the opportunity to file what we would call counterclaims or third-party claims. And that's where you can look at the, the complaint, evaluate what half-truths or innuendos or allegations are there, and determine whether or not you have the right, legal right, to ask for relief against not only the person suing you, or there might be somebody else responsible. Again, sometimes they need some creativity in this, and that's why you have to have that warrior at your disposal, that person that's got your interest. So you file this answer, and sometimes with the counterclaims or, or third-party complaint. Then the next process you'll end in, uh, go into is what's called the discovery phase. And again, this is a phase we don't see in TV, we don't see in the movies. It's, it's very long and time-consuming at times. And this is where you get questions asked of you in writing, and you ask questions in writing. These are called interrogatories. And you have document requests that you make and someone asks of you where, you, where you have documents related to the lawsuit. These are called requests for production. And then finally, you have what's called depositions. And that's where you, people related to the, to the complaint, witnesses, will we'll go before a court reporter and give sworn testimony that's being recorded. That's called deposition testimony. This process takes quite some time. Sometimes it takes many months, up to a year, could be several years depending upon how complex the matter is. After all this is gathered, this gathering is called getting the evidence of the case. Once you have the evidence of the case, keep it in mind, it didn't happen immediately. You were served on this complaint a month or two, or five, or eight, or a year ago. You've got all this evidence together. Now you need to compile, gather this evidence, and, and really come together and see if you can get out of the lawsuit. Now, how do you do that? Well, you take the, the, the documents and the deposition testimony, these answers to questions, these interrogatories, and you see if you can file a motion that gets you out of the lawsuit. That motion is called a motion for summary judgment. Sometimes it's successful, depending upon each case, obviously, and sometimes, unfortunately, it's not. Then the final phase of the matter is a trial. And that's the part where you see on TV or in the movies. It's a lot longer in reality than you see on TV and the movies, but nonetheless, that's what, what happens once you get all of the documents and everything together. Yes, it takes a long time. Yes, it's expensive. And yes, it's time consuming and at times can be very, very stressful. However, if you have this warrior, as I talked about, this, this person that has your interest at heart, this person with integrity, you will have a good understanding through every step and every facet of the case on what you're facing. Of course, with obviously the disclosed uncertainties that you might not win motions and that you, know, you may have to, to um, produce additional documentation you don't feel like producing. So my suggestion would be, if you get a lawsuit served on your door, it, it, it disrupts your afternoon barbecue plans. After your, the initial shock and dismay, anger, anxiety is over, after you've calmed down a little bit, assured your loved ones that things are going to be fine, we're going to find that warrior, 
My suggestion is when you meet with the warrior, your, your, your champion, ask those questions such as, what's the process like? What are we looking at doing? How much do you think approximately it's going to cost? Not asking for definiteness, but what are the parameters of, of those things? Do we need to settle? Do we need to prepare this case for trial? And finally, and I failed to mention earlier, that only 4% of all matters filed, all lawsuits filed in our country actually go to trial. So what happens with the other 94%? Well, quite simply, they settle, they're dismissed, you know, and, and they, don't, they don't end up with this resolution that you see in the movies or on TV. And the, the resolution that I'm talking about that's alternative to that would be through mediation or other alternative dispute type fashion. And these avenues are available also. And you should, when you're talking with this person that you may hire as your champion or warrior, discuss with them these options and see what the availability of that would be too. I'm sorry that I had to give you the reality, but that is the reality of what happens when you get served, what happens when you have that lawsuit. It isn't though the end of the world. It's unsettling, like I said. It's not fun, but when properly addressed and when taken, understanding the steps that are there, understanding what your rights are, understanding what the process is, you can ensure yourself to a higher degree of success than otherwise. Thank you and have a good day.